Hey everyone, welcome back to JLake 3D. So today we're gonna to be working on a custom spring tutorial or a custom wire tutorial, depending on how you wanna make it. So let's say you have like um, a piece here and you have a machine that coils spring all the way around it and uh, or you have a spring. So this is basically what we're gonna be teaching today. And uh, we're, we're gonna start off by making a sketch base. Let's make it 20 by 10. And let's make sure we close that and let's lock this into place because when we make this second line, I don't want it to move. So let's make this 380. And if we didn't lock that into place, it would have woo shot down all the way there. But 380 and then another 20 by 10. So a total of 400 in this case. So now that we have this, we see we have our center line here. Let's extend that out to this point. Let's say we want our pieces to be there. We're gonna make a spline to go around there to match our shape. So spline, and then start from this place, a pressure point here, pressure point there, pressure point there, and then finish up right there. So we have this very unique shape that uh, you can basically have a spring material there inside and cover it up with either fabric or paper, like a Chinese lantern, so to speak. So after we have this, what we wanna do is tools, revolve, and let's select all of our pieces here. And then uh, use that center Z axis since we're in the middle as the revolution center point. All right, now I just, to finish this off, I wanna add a couple of fillets here to make it smooth, let's say by 20. And then once we have that, we go to tools and shell because what we wanna do is just use this as an example for our spring, right? This is gonna be like the base material once you're doing manufacturing, but we just want to use it as a reference. So let's make it approximately two millimeters, click done. And then from this point, let's go ahead and hide it in the items menu and uh, click on the front place there at the top right. So we go back to the face that we wanna work on and we want to make a revolution. So we could start off by simply making another sketch. Let's say, uh, just let's make a square here. So after we have that square, we go to tools, revolve, choose that square, use the Z axis again. Let's go up by 400 millimeters. And uh, once we get there, we see it goes to the end there. So we actually, I would like to go down a little bit more. So not 400, but 390 in this case. And then for revolutions we want, uh, let's start out with 10,000, just to see how that goes. And uh, I want it to extend all the way to the edge there. So let's move that over manually. That's gonna be 10,080 there. So we didn't have to do any calculations. We just line it up with the face. All right, click done. And then let's unhide our first body. Click the front plane again. Click section view on the top, on the bottom left right there. So we can kind of go inside the project. And what I hope to do is to replace the face. So tools, replace face. Select this face, the one that we want to replace with the reference face here on the outside that we want it to match. So hopefully, hopefully this works. Sometimes it might not, and we might have to just extend it out and use the subtract tool. So that'll add a couple steps, but uh, technically this should work. So let's hope that does. Um, and while it's loading, I just want to mention too that sometimes you come across projects that you expect to work. Like for example, here it didn't work. So what we have to do is adjust the situation and it's good to know other methods of using it. So let's go ahead and just select this face. And obviously I'm a little disappointed it didn't work because I'm trying to make a tutorial here, but I'm gonna show you a workaround here that'll work for other projects. And, and then I will go in and actually show you the first original method I intended to show just so you know it works. But anyways, once we have that extended, what we wanna do is then uh, turn off section view, tools, subtract from this body this inside body, or you can go into items menu and select it from here as well. And once the loading screen finishes, because some of these projects, because they are a bit twisty, they take a while. So click done. And then remember how I matched the face, I went down below, it wasn't the total, like it wasn't excessively over 400, it was just under or exactly fit. So we can just simply subtract the outside and that should technically work without us having to do any extra work. So if we double click the outside, click delete, we should technically still have the inside. There we go, perfect. So this is one way to do it. And then I will go in uh, later in the video just to show you that the other way works as well. Uh, but here, let's go ahead and show the people who are in a hurry that uh, this is how we get it done. So now that we have this shape, remember if we go to the first body, this is the outside. Let's turn on section view. Well, let's line it up with the front face first so I can show you, so section view now. So as you can see, I matched that face with the inside 
of our face, right? So that goes right on the inside. So if you want your wire or cable to go directly inside, what you want to do is uh, sketch a circle. Let's say, uh, let's actually match it first. So tools, uh, not tools, but select the circle, the line, click tangent, and then do the same thing here on top. And now we have it, as you see, right inside. So if you want it there inside, that's perfect. Or if you want it to actually be on here, then you would have to draw, let's say your circle from the center point. So depending on where you want it, but let's say we want it here, right? So what we do now is hide our first body so it's not in the way there. We go to tools, sweep, select our circle, click next. And then we're gonna simply use that outside edge to continue our sweep. And technically it should go all the way around, but sometimes there's a cutoff there. Let's turn off section view. As you can see the edge here, it kind of cuts off. So let's try to see if we can continue it on. Sometimes it won't let us because the bend is too large. In those cases, let me just say up front, in, like in this case it worked by just clicking the next edge, right? But in some cases it will not. So let me show you what to do in that as well. So tools, sweep, select the circle, click next, select this line. And then once it stops here, typically, even though it might say there's an error, if you go there, if you click done and go to tools and sweep again, select this face, click next, and then continue this line, this technically should work. So just FYI. So as you can see, we go all the way around and probably going to do the same thing at the top, all things considered, click that one as well, it should work in this case. And then if you want to continue it all the way there, just one more, click done. And then let's hide our first body or rather second body in this case, after it finishes. And we have here a two separate pieces just because remember I connected them at the bottom. So what you can do is tools union, these two spring pieces, click done. And now we have a solid piece of specific cable or wire, whatever you want to call it, but a very custom shape. Okay. And then you can put your outer material on this. Let's say like, like so. And let's say it's transparent so we can see what's going on here. Let's make it white and let's say 50%. Go back to modeling. And as you can see, this is a good structure support for your material. So this is just one way to do it. And then let's go ahead and go back to step one after the sketch, just so I can show you that it does actually work. And then let's try from the very beginning. So front face try our sketch and this is just for those who want to stick around and learn extra stuff you don't have to be here let's try 400 and then uh, let's try a spline that meets in multiple spots maybe that was the reason so let's try adding one more here in the middle and moving that so okay now tools revolve this around the center there and then uh, what I forgot to do is we need an edge there because we don't want it to just end in a, in a weird way. So let's go ahead and add an extension on each side. Let's close our sketches and then revolve that. So tools, revolve these three closed sketches, click done. And then what I want to do is also just fill it these, maybe a smooth transition will help like so. And then tools, shell, because I do want to have just the outer edge there by two millimeters. And then let's go ahead and hide our body, double click. And then for the revolution, let's go ahead and try something like a big rectangle just for the heck of it. And uh, tools revolve around the center, go up by 400 millimeters. And revolve, let's start out with 10,000. That, as you can see, Shaper updated their uh, threads and springs so that instead of failing, they actually collide now. So let's make that less though, because remember we did make a giant um, rectangle there. So let's go ahead and revolve it one more time just so we can meet on the edge, or at least in a straight path. There we go. And then from this point, click done. What I want to do is just uh, extrude this out as a new body because we do want to split it there at the top. Tools, split body, select this body and split it right there. And double click it and delete it. Let's also delete that 
specific edge there. And once we have that, let's unhide our first body and go to the front plane there on the top right and turn on section view. And then from here, tools, replace face. Let's select the outer face of the spring and the outer face of our part as the reference and hope this works. It should technically, and as you can see, it did. So click done. So this was a, what I was expecting to happen the first time, but uh, we had a more complex shape. It didn't want to work out, but uh, we do now. So let's hide our first body. And then from this point, let's turn off section view there. And from this point on, we go, and on this starting face, we draw our circle. So again, I'm drawing it here. We technically would te want it like here on the inside, um, just because we don't want it inside of our part, but rather we do want it inside the part, but not like uh, colliding with it. But in this case, I'm just showing you now. So tools, sweep, let's select our circle from all these sides, click next, and then select the outer edge there as a guide. Let's wait for that loading screen to go on and hope my iPad doesn't die because I do have 5% left. And as we can see, click done, it followed through even to this very custom shape. Like you, it's really hard to get this unique shape otherwise, but uh, this is a good process for you guys to get it going if you do need it. So let's go to items and hide our body. And now as you can see, we have a very unique custom shape. So this is, imagine if you have um, like this shape, for example, and you have a machine, well, rather not, not this shape, but this shape, and you have a machine that kind of just winds this, the wire all the way around as it goes a, a distance. So this is a very unique shape to get um, cables on. So hope you guys learned something. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you have it in your heart to support this channel, please do so. Uh, you can either use the memberships here, super thanks, or go to my uh, website and use the PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, stuff like that. So if that helps you out, don't forget to help me out. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Here at JLake 3 d our goal is to inspire and empower you to create your own amazing projects. Please support our work so that we can keep doing it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to see more.